Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special address portion of Harassa's extraordinary meeting on the United States of America that assists country leaders achieve their economic and political goals globally. I'm also a tenured professor and director of programs at City University of New York, Baruch College, Zicklin School of Business, the largest business school in the United States. And last but not least, I'm proud to serve as honorary board member for two very important nonprofit organizations, Legal and Aid Foundation and Global Confederation for Promotion and Development, both of which provide very much needed humanitarian, economic advisory, and other assistance around the world. But most importantly for today, I have the honor and pleasure to chair this important special address through a conversation with no other than His Excellency, President of Suriname, Chan Satoki. Mr. President, I very much appreciate you accepting my invitation to attend this very important event and for taking time from your busy schedule to be here with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stephen Melnick, co-chairs of the Horace's Extraordinary Meeting, strategic partners, partner organizations, members of Horace's Organization Committee, ladies and gentlemen, good morning all. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to take part in this important meeting. Allow me to start by thanking you for inviting me to be your keynote speaker at the Plenary for Latin America and United States of America, strengthening a natural partnership. While the global economic and political landscape is witnesses unpredictable turns and remains at an ever dynamic and volatile stage today, the current COVID-19 pandemic has only added to these concerns. The COVID-19 pandemic left us with weakened states and with shattered economies and insufficient healthcare system. Both in the technical capacities and in their coverage of providing timely and effective care to the population. Faced with the harsh challenges this COVID-19 pandemic has brought, our region is more divided than our proclamation. For greater integration and Latin America of Latin America and USA would like to recognize. Once again, faced with the health challenges of COVID-19 pandemic has brought, our region is more divided than our proclamations for a greater integration of Latin America and USA would like to recognize. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic exceeds the health, health sector by far, which is why it is imperative to promote regional solidarity and international cooperation between our countries. In this regard, the focus of the role of Suriname in bilateral relations of Latin America region with the USA will be to work together with the USA to foster peace and stability in the Americas. Since regional security is important to continue building safe and prosperous societies in our hemisphere. We believe that a strong South America in partnership with the USA will benefit the people of the Americas in terms of safety and economic developments. With the new administration of Biden-Harris, there are emerging signals of more engagement with the Latin American region, and we welcome that. Engaging with the new USA administration, the key initiatives of, for Suriname will be the following. Suriname and the USA share internationally accepted norms of interstate relations and behavior based on democratic governance, rule of law, and the protection of human and political rights. As such, we'll work together in the Western Hemisphere and multilateral organizations such as the Organization of American States to promote democracy and rule of law, building peace, and create prosperity. Shortly after the elections in May last year, my government started high-level talks with key U.S. officials in the White House and the State Department. This resulted in a historic visit of the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, to Suriname last year. And I'm pleased to tell you that Suriname will continue this engagement with the new U.S. administration and will promote this bilateral cooperation. As such, Suriname will engage with the U.S. bilaterally 
on strengthening commerce and investment, especially with oil and gas perspectives. Within a couple of years, many USA-based companies will be able to benefit from providing services and goods to the oil and gas industry. We already have several major U.S. companies operating in the extractive industries in Suriname, such as the Newmont Gold Mining out of Denver and also Exxon. Suriname also intensively engaged with the U.S. East, especially Southern Command, on security measures, especially in the fight against organized crime, illegal traffic of drugs, and people and piracy. Suriname has already received the commander of Southcom in Suriname and agreed on technical assistance. And today we started with the Southcom, with the special operation of Southcom, with the technical assistance program in the fight against illegal trafficking of drugs and other illicit, illicit trafficking and also counter terrorism. It's a technical assistance program provided by the U.S. government and executed by the Southcom. And today, they started with this program in Suriname with our security surface, surfaces. And Suriname will seek regular and result-oriented engagement and assistance with the U.S. Congress also. Especially in the regional context, we'll ask the USA to support the fragile economies of the Caribbean, especially in efforts to restructure debt and providing debt relief. A further deterioration of economic conditions in the Caribbean will only result in increased migratory flows also to the USA. The role of Suriname in bilateral relations of Latin American region with the United States of America will continue to focus on fostering peace and stability in the Americas, regional security, safety, and economic development. Suriname will actively engage with the reputable and influential non-governmental organizations in the USA to promote and to present the opportunities in Suriname. We understand the benefit of working with powerful influencers to support our goal of a strategic and beneficial partnership with the USA. With regard to untapped economic and political opportunities between United States and Suriname, I already mentioned the opportunities for investment and commerce. I see enormous potential for tourism, especially now American Airlines have decided to fly five times a week starting in July on this year. And we welcome all the tourists and we are preparing uh, a visa-free travel for all U.S. citizens to Suriname. When my country wants to establish a real geopolitical and strategic partnership with the USA. We both must recognize that potentially in the backyard of the United States, a major strategic industry will be emerging that will be of geopolitical importance. This is the relationship of mutual interest and benefit. It is important that USA politicians, legislators and policy makers understand this and act on it, especially in the context of global trade and the financial and supply chain flows. With this last remark, I extend it to you our sincerest gratitude on the role of Suriname in bilateral relations of Latin American region with the USA. I thank you very much and wish you all under the wise and able leadership of Dr. Stephen Melnick a lot of success. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. President. And I very much appreciate these uh, opening remarks. Uh, you covered, covered the whole spectrum of topics that actually I was going to bring up with you. But what impresses me tremendously, and I'd love to give you uh, well-deserved credit, uh, and it certainly doesn't surprise me that uh, last May when you won, you won unopposed, uh, just how proactive your administration is in engaging globally and certainly with the United States. You know, one thing that always um, surprises me and frankly speaking makes, makes me feel a bit sad when I sit down with global leaders and we go through their wish list of things they'd like to accomplish politically or economically with the United States or other parts of the world, 
there are always these complaints. Well, this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. And frankly speaking, I never see uh, these countries' representatives really at the tables engaging, trying to make things actually happen. Like you just mentioned, you know, there's new administration in the United States, and it creates these tremendous opportunities. You know, not too long ago, case in point, when Trump administration has a, you know, dealt with China and, and uh, resulting trade dispute, a lot of manufacturing jobs opportunities shifted to Asia and not to Latin America, where, which was very well positioned, you know, to absorb this extra business due to its, you know, location, geographic location, uh, low cost of wages, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm pleased to see that Suriname became very proactive uh, under your administration and there are already results. And at that point, I'd like to ask you, so what are some of the top items on your agenda when it comes to specifically engaging the United States? I know you broadly defined a lot of things. There are a lot of, there's a lot of progress already, uh, but what are some of the key elements, key initiatives on your end? Uh, I was just discussing with our audience uh, such proactive steps that your administration taken. And frankly speaking, I think in many ways it's unprecedented for so many things to happen within such short period of time. And you're right. Uh, this was the first time that Secretary of State of the United States uh, under the prior administration visited Suriname. And uh, also in terms of, you know, there's always been old good economic ties and also military ties with the United States. And I know Admiral of Southern, uh, Southern Command also visited and kind of there was a many, very, very deep and meaningful coordination of efforts and war of drugs. So my question to you, Mr. President, um, you are already involved in so many things and so many uh, engagements. What are some of your top agenda items, your top wish list when it comes to United States and Suriname's engagement with the United States administration? Since you yourself pointed, <clears throat> pointed out that <clears throat> Biden's administration creates new opportunities. Yes, it's very clear. Let me go back uh, to your uh, uh, remark, uh, sir. Uh, the election of last year, the 25th of May, was not an election based on a national agenda. It was not an election which uh, was left for the Sunamese citizen to decide. That election was important also for the regional agenda, but also for the international cooperation. And as you know, what had happened the last 10 years under uh, leadership of Mr. Bautersa as president in the 10 years, that Suriname was isolated. The Suriname came in a position where the national debt was increased, and today we have a, a debt, an international and national debt of four billion U.S. dollar. That all the sectors are confronted with crisis, with lack of cooperation internationally, and the decision was also to position Suriname in geopolitically perspective. And with the decision of the people on the 25th of May, yes, the people decided that there should be an other political direction for Suriname. And one was to have control of the crisis and solve that uh, crisis in a responsible manner for the benefit of the Surinamese people, but also to bring Suriname back on the international agenda, but also on the international track of nations supporting democracy again, supporting rule of law again, and supporting cooperation with the uh, countries in the hemisphere. And in the regional's perspective, it was a very important decision. So given that, we know our responsibility as new government, and I know my responsibility as president of Suriname.